Have you ever had a payday loan? Or have you ever heard of a payday loan? Well, in today's episode, we're gonna talk about how payday loans are keeping potential homeowners as renters and preventing them from buying their first home. Hello and welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Milan, and this podcast was created to provide real-world advice and accountability for first-time homebuyers. We'll be interviewing industry experts, providing some how-tos, and talking with first-time homebuyers about their personal experiences. If that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe, and if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the little bell to be notified when new episodes release. Now let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about a hot topic. This is something that's going on in our communities, something that I actually personally had to overcome before we bought our first home. And it's something that I wanted to address because as we sit down with families, we often see that there are some people who are still utilizing payday loans on a monthly basis. And so I really want to address payday loans and how they're impacting not only your household, but also your community at large. And so the biggest thing that I want to talk about is the fact that payday loans are becoming an ever increasing normal type of uh, way of borrowing money in our society. And what happened before is that there used to be, you know, storefronts that people would go to in order to borrow short term loans as a payday loan, sometimes maybe a title loan, things of that nature. They would actually have to go to it walk in, take out the loan, write a post dated check. And we'll kind of dive into that a little bit later, but you used to have to actually physically go there. What we're seeing now are, you know, is a rise of apps that are coming out that are making it all too easy for you to borrow short term loans at high interest rates. And so we're going to talk about this and how it impacts potential homeowners, keeping them back from their reaching their goal of home ownership. The first thing I want to address is, you know, what is a payday loan? I recognize that not everybody knows what a payday loan is. They come in different terms. um, They're seen differently within different communities. And so a payday loan is essentially a short term loan at a high interest rate. Um, And these loans were thought of ways to overcome, you know, emergencies that may come up in life. What happens is you would walk into a location, as I mentioned, you know, now you can do it through apps, but you would go to a lender um, and you would write them a post-dated check. Um, And here in California, the most that you can borrow was $300. So of that $300, $45 or 15% would be fees. So they wouldn't give you the 300, you would get $255 because you're paying a $45 fee, a 15% fee to borrow that money. Now you would borrow that money for um, anywhere between a week to up to 31 days, you know, to when your next paycheck would come with the idea that, hey, I'm going to borrow these funds and I'm going to pay it off when I get paid. Um, And so that was the, the concept of these payday loans. They're just quick, short term loans. However, when you're borrowing that money, you're not really paying 15%. You're not paying just the $45. When you look at the actual APR of those borrowed uh, funds in a two week period, you're paying 480% on that money. Your APR is 480%. And so these loans can be very, very dangerous. As an industry, they made 7.4 billion dollars annually back in 2012. I can imagine what they're making now. Again, you know the the rise of the apps, the the easy way for you to borrow these funds with no credit checks and no signatures and all these different things is becoming um, an increasing problem in our communities. And the reason it becomes a problem is because studies have shown uh, Pew Research put out a study showing that. People do not pay back these loans on time. In fact, the majority of folks, over 60% of them, are using these funds to pay for everyday items, not emergencies. They're paying the utility bill. They're using it as a gap to pay for their rent. So it's an ongoing thing for them. It's not just a one-time emergency type of loan. They're now using it to fund um, basically to pay their expenses every single month. And so that becomes an issue because we've seen through this research that folks who borrow that money on a short term basis, thinking that up to 14 days, then I'm going to pay this off 
are actually in this cycle, this payday loan cycle. It's a debt cycle and it's a debt trap. Um, and they're actually in these loans for up to five months on average. So in that lifespan of you know borrowing, getting a new loan, getting a new loan every single month, they're paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars in fees and interest on these short-term loans just to take care of their normal expenses. And so in this research, you know, it talked about like, you know, who are the people that are, are using these loans, you know, because there's a certain stigma out there. You know, a lot of folks will say, hey, well, hey, that's dumb. You know, smart people with with money wouldn't borrow this, you know, these short-term loans with these high interest rates. And that's just shown to be incorrect. You know, this research is showing that it doesn't matter what your income level is. People are using these from all different demographics. Um, and it doesn't it's not about income because they're seeing that people who are earning six figures are actually taking out payday loans and, um, you know, title loans and things of that nature. It's a problem, you know, and like I said, it's a trap. And so today, you know, we're going to highlight, you know, kind of what this is and how it's affecting the community. But most importantly, how it's affecting the, the people that we sit down with who want to buy a house, you know, but they're stuck. And they're trying to figure their way out of this payday loan trap. So again, as I mentioned, income is not really, you know, a basis of, of separation here. Neither is financial education. The study actually showed what the pressing issue is, is time. People who feel like they don't have time feel like they have to take out these loans. So it doesn't matter income, doesn't matter, you know, necessarily the demographics, but it's about the time pressure that you feel. Studies have shown, I actually just read a book called Mind Over Money that talked about the cortisol release and of the stress of time. And so when they talk about making poor decisions or poor money management decisions, it's really coming from a stress aspect, not an income aspect. So people who are under stress, people who feel like they don't have time to catch up on their bills are going to make these types of decisions in the short term not taking into consideration the long-term effects of these types of decisions. And so when it comes to buying a house, you may think, well, I got to pay my expenses. You know, I, I, I got to take care of the, the here and now, you know, yes, I want to buy a house, but you know, Hey, this electricity bill is due. And so I get it. Like I said, you know, I was in this before I bought my first home. So I, I definitely get it. And I empathize with the fact that, you know, it's easy for you to think that I can just get this and pay this off and be done with it. And that's just not the case. You know, like I said, on average, people are in these loans for five months. And so it does have an impact on your bottom line. What was interesting to me about this study was that they had asked the question. They said, hey, if payday loans weren't available to you, what would you do? And over 81% of people who were surveyed said that they would cut their expenses. So they would cut back on their month to month expenses in order to trim the fat, if you would, so that they can cover the, the you know their monthly obligations. And I found that interesting because as I sit down with clients and, and we're going over budgets, you know, oftentimes we do this needs versus wants, you know, and, and really getting down to the nooks and crannies of what expenses do you absolutely have to have versus what are the ones that we can cut? You know, what are the ones that we can get rid of? And so if you were to do this with your budget, I think that you would find ways to get rid of the extras and not have to use these payday loans to cover those extras. Again, emergency situations, that's different. Things come up. We always talk about, you know, making sure that you have $1,000 in savings as a, you know, the Dave Ramsey first baby step, you know, in case of emergency. So you don't have to use these payday loans, but to be using payday loans on an ongoing basis to cover your monthly expenses, you got to make different decisions. And that decision comes down to really analyzing where's your money going and analyzing your needs versus your wants. That's the first step. And we really want you to cut those expenses. The second thing that you can do instead of using a payday loan is if you do have credit cards and say you're, you know, you're getting close to your limits or, you know, you feel yourself under some pressure, you know, or things are just kind of piling up. Maybe they cut back on hours at work, whatever the case may be. Talk to your credit card companies and find out if they'll raise the limit. A $500 limit 
uh, increase is a lot better than going to borrow $300 from a payday loan. I know it's not the best solution. It's not something that we would go to first, but it is a better alternative than to go to a payday loan. And so we want you to, to look at that. If you, again, if you're feeling the pressure, I know a lot of folks are saying, hey, the recession, uh, maybe they're having some cutbacks on hours, things of that nature. If you're feeling the financial pressure and the stress coming, I don't want you to make the decision to go use a payday loan. I'd rather you talk to your credit card companies and find out, is there a way for me to get an increase um, on my credit limits? And that way you can cover your ongoing expenses if you, you know, have gotten down to your needs versus wants. Another way that you can avoid payday loans is to borrow money from friends and family. I know this goes against a lot of the, you know, the, the advice that is out there. But when it comes to alternatives, I'd much rather you borrow the money from a friend or family member, even if they charge you interest. Remember, if they charge you interest for borrowing from them, it's a lot better than paying 480% at a payday loan uh, place. So, you know, talk to friends, talk to family, swallow the pride and borrow money at a smaller interest rate. Sometimes you may have a friend or family member who won't charge you interest, which is fine, but take them just as serious as you would the payday loan. You know, you don't want to burn that bridge. You want to keep that relationship. And so if you have friends and family who can help you, I'd much rather you go that route than to go to a payday loan. So those are just a couple alternatives to using payday loans. Like I mentioned, I've been through this, you know, before we bought our first home, we were in that payday loan trap, you know, where you just didn't have enough to cover the expenses. We had a new baby. There were a lot of things going on. And so, you know, for us to get out of that trap, it was actually, you know, a tax refund, which, you know, those are things of the past now, but, you know, we would get a tax refund and then we were able to pay it off and get out of that trap once and for all. But, you know, studies have shown that, you know, there's not a lot of ways to get out of this once you're in it. And so, you know, I don't want you to get in it at all. You know, I want you to avoid it. The study also showed that homeowners are less likely to use payday loans than renters. And I think that's obvious. I think homeowners are typically a little, they have a little bit more financial education. They have a little bit more in the bank before they buy a house, you know, to make sure that they're protected to pay their mortgage. Um, they take their finances very, very serious because they do not want to lose the housing that they have. So I think there's a little more to that and why homeowners don't use payday loans. And honestly, they can probably tap into equity that they have as well, if, if need be, if they got into a dire situation. And so I don't want you as a renter to get into this because this is actually going to hold you back as you're paying these high interest and these fees, you're not really making way, you know, on this journey towards home ownership. And so it can hold you back longer than you expect it. And so as a renter, you know, I want you to, yes, if, if you get into a financial situation, our first advice to you is to have a thousand dollars in savings. So that way, if something comes up, you can cover it. Then tackle the budget. Look at the budget. What are the needs? What are the wants? Let's cut back where we can. If we have to borrow, we want to borrow low interest. So let's talk to the credit card companies that you already have. Maybe they can increase your limits so you can just cover those expenses temporarily. Or if need be, go to friends or family, borrow from them, swallow the pride. Even if it's at an interest that you're paying back to them, it's going to be a lot smaller than a payday loan at 480%. So I wanted to highlight this because we do meet with families who are going through this, who are dealing with, you know, just trying to catch up. And so I get it. I understand it. If you need any help, if you're kind of going through the struggle yourself um, and you and you feel stuck, reach out to us. You can always visit us on our website at homeownerprep.com forward slash start. And you can, you know, start there. You know, no matter where you're at, if you're just trying to put a budget together, if you feel like, hey, I've been, you know, working on my budget, I got savings, I think I'm ready to buy a house, you can reach out to us and we can help you with that process as well. As always, you can send us a direct message through any of our social media channels as well. Um, the easiest one is going to be through Instagram at Homeowner Prep. If you have just some simple questions about, you know, your situation, um, we can definitely help you out there as well. I hope this episode was valuable to you. I hope that you recognize that if you're in these financial situations and dealing with a payday loan, there are ways out. There are alternatives and there are solutions. Take it from me who's somebody who's gone through it, got out of it, 
and then eventually became a homeowner. There's hope there. And so I really want you to recognize that. And again, if you need any help, reach out to us. I look forward to providing you with some more great content on the next episode. And until then, be blessed. I hope you got some value from today's episode. If you know someone who could benefit from hearing this show, be sure to share it with them. And if you're listening to the podcast, we'd love for you to drop us a review. We'd also love to hear from you if you have any questions. So reach out to us on Instagram at homeowner prep. Who knows? We may read your review and answer your question on one of our future shows.